Uh, when you say low tedious water, have you found that low carbonate hydrous is more, less, or equally as important as low calcium and magnesium? So I honestly um, don't measure the carbonate hardness necessarily. Like the, I do occasionally do GH and KH, but I find that you know for the most part it's stable you know so and it's usually two or three degrees the little tube test kits kind of drive me nuts because they're not all that accurate you know so if you could if somebody can provide me with a, a meter that i can stick in the water and it gives me a really accurate reading of carbonate hardness i'll use it all the time but but the tube ones are kind of they just drive me a little crazy so i like i like the tds ph yeah i've got a meter it kind of is irritating because it has to be calibrated a lot, you know, but the, you know, that that's part of the reason why I use TDS a lot is just that it's, it's simply calculated, right? You put the electrodes in the water, boom, you can, can you can check your conductivity or your TDS, you know, it's not, you know, there's no grounds for interpretation. You know? So that's, uh, and there's no, you know, well, maybe my meter wasn't calibrated enough. So maybe I'm not reading the pH, right? Something like that. Or my tubes, was that one drop or two that I just dropped in there? I'm not hundred percent sure, you know? So I, I don't go crazy with those, you know, kind of, um, if wishy-washy measures too much, uh, yeah. Again, if you can provide me meters, scientific meters that pull that stuff, I'll use them all the time. I'm I'm good with that. I uh, will say one comment on calcium. So, um, one of the first bad experiences I had was with Corydoras meti, and that one I had already bred Corydoras or you know Osteogastrinia Corydoras aeneas. Uh, Hoplosoma paleatum, which is used to be Corydoras paleatus, and I think another one that was kind of odd. I think it was like Earhartii, uh, uh, so so which is now Hoplosoma earhartii, but at that time it was Corydoras earhartii. So I bred three of them, and I was able to get some real chunky meti, you know, and so the bandit cory, and they looked really good. And the the guy who sold them to me said, I think you know you'll get these to spawn right away, and he was right. Uh, you know, within a couple of weeks started getting 80 eggs a week, you know, I just, they were spawning like crazy and I was doing all my normal processes, but the eggs would not hatch or if they did hatch, they would. And the fry would come out, not looking like a tadpole, but looking like a piece of string and it would die shortly thereafter. Right. You know, and I was trying to figure that out. And I talked to, to Ted Judy, uh, as it used to be a YouTuber that had Ted's fish room. Uh, he was one of the first big fish YouTubers and he was local to me. And I said, you got any ideas? And he said, well, actually it was just seeing that with the Daisy right fish, white rice fish, or is that, um, I was trying to spawn them in our tap water and I'm finding that they can't break the eggs. So I, I cut the water with 50% RO, thereby decreasing the amount of calcium in the water by 50%. And then the egg shells were not as hard, you know. And I tried it with those meti. And after a couple of uh, water changes using RO instead of the tap water, definitely that, that calcification of the eggs had to be the problem because then they started hatching in the normal time frame in four or five days. And when they hatched, they were um, like, you know, they were tadpoles, they weren't string beans, they were, they were healthy, you know, so they, they made it, you know? So, so I think that that's something again, yeah. I'm, and calcium, I would imagine there is probably a better test, but it's for salt water. So I don't know if that applies to, to fresh water or not, you know, but I, again, I, I pretty much only do the the type of tests um, regularly that I can get a, an instant readout, and there's no, you know, you know, was it one drop or two? Because that's how many degrees of KH it was, you know. <laughs> so yeah, cool. yeah. Um, Rebecca's just brought up. Uh, she said the same with insistrous. Uh mm -hmm. Calcium or similar seems to prevent hatching, and there are papers behind that. So. Yep. Yeah. That makes logical sense. Um, yes, I was speaking to someone here in Nelson who bred discus, and he was having a similar problem with mm -hmm. um, eggs hardening far too fast, and he had to fiddle around with stuff, dropping that, and then um, he got success that way. 